Hey there, it's, it's Ben Bingo again with the Eastern Shawnee Tribe with the Native Connection Program. And so today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about crystal meth, just some facts on it. So I've got some written down. Um, hopefully you'll find them interesting or at least uh, teach you something you hadn't heard before. So uh, crystal meth works by increasing dopamine in the body, which is important in motor function, and motivation, your brain's reward system and how the brain experiences pleasure. So it, it messes with that uh, by taking it. Uh, it affects the brain structure and function, specifically your emotions, memory, and judgment, and may change standard behavior and feelings. Chronic use of meth can lead to developmental, emotional, and cognitive difficulties, as well as psychological effects such as anxiety, insomnia, hyperactivity, increased energy, delusions of grandeur, hallucinations, paranoia, and then uh, compulsive skin picking, as in like your, their person's skin will constantly itch and so they'll constantly scratch and leave wounds on themselves, um, which leads into physical symptoms of meth use. Uh, anorexia, so you'll lose a lot of weight, uh, blurred vision, sores on their, their skin and their body, uh, gum disease, poor teeth, headaches, profuse sweating, uh, rapid breathing, restlessness. Um, so meth works by producing a feeling of euphoria and it can be up to 12 hours, but after several uses of meth, uh, the dosage that's used to reach that has to be increased because your body um, starts building up a tolerance for it. So um, it becomes addictive quite fast and it can lead to a substance use disorder. Now, if someone hasn't had meth in a while and they're a user, um, they can go through withdrawal and withdrawal symptoms include agitation, severe depression, fatigue, psychosis. And then you can treat it by managing the physical withdrawal symptoms, uh, getting, gaining support for the underlying issues that led to the use of crystal meth, and providing health, healthy coping skills. So counseling, um, perhaps some inpatient treatment to help uh, gain, get over the withdrawal symptoms as your body purges yourself from the system. Um, the only problem is, unfortunately, there aren't any FDA-approved drugs uh, to assist in recovery. Uh, behavioral therapy does um, assist that. Uh, medication can be prescribed to assist with other symptoms such as the depression or anxiety. Um, and if it's a severe case, uh, there is there are medical detox programs that can be used. So that's a little bit about meth. Um, I hope I hope you've learned something new that you didn't know before, and I appreciate you taking the time to listen. Thank you. Today we're going to work on uh, making a choker. You can get these in kits through Crazy Crow, or there may be a few other websites if you look around. Or if you've done this before or has someone that you know that's done them before, they can tell you what you need. What you generally need to start with is you need that what's called hair pipe. You'll need some beads. You'll need sinew. You'll need your spacers because these are what you're going to use to put it together. And then you'll need some uh, a strip of hide or something that can you can use to tie it around your uh, neck when you're done. So we're going to do just enough to show you guys how to get started and then how to finish it. Because once you get started, it's a pretty uh, standard process if you just do the same thing until you're ready to finish. So what you do is you take your spacer. This is your end. And these will be between every um, set of uh, sections, sort of like this one. So you have your end, and then another spacer, and a spacer. And you, ad you adjust these based on how big you want the choker. See, here's a shorter one. It doesn't use as many spacers. And some of these even are wider, so you can have more beads and more 
uh, hair pipe through it so it's a, a wider one versus longer. So, what you do is you take this and you've got to get you've got to get your sinew started because that's what you're going to put your your hair pipe and your beads on. And so what you do is you start at the bottom and you're going to thread it through. I, some, I, I like to thread it through twice because this is what's going to keep it held on and you're going to want this to be real sturdy so it doesn't break later. then you're going to want to tie it in a knot or double knot it whatever makes you feel like it's secure so we're just going to tie it in a knot for now and we'll double knot it and then with sinew usually once you get your knot tied you'll take a, a lighter or a match and you'll burn it to, to where it melts and it makes a good hard knot that won't come off. So there you go, you got your knot, it's pretty, pretty good, and then you'll just burn this extra off and you'll want to make sure your, your line goes like that. So, next thing you'll do is generally you probably won't have one as long as this, so if you can, once you, if you've got measured out how big a one you want, you can cut your sinew so it's easier, because you're going to take this and you're going to do your design. So, like what we got here today, is some blue, some green beads, and then this. But we want to start with the green. So you just take your green, you take your green, and you thread that sinew through it, and then. You could do one, you could do two, generally one. Uh, they also have metal beads you could do. So let's say we're going to do two greens. And then we're going to put this on. Let's say we want a blue one. Pull that through down to your spacer, so like that. There you go. So that's your the start of your design. Then you would take your next spacer. And you're gonna thread it on. Like so. And if it's okay if it's a little loose at first because it's going to tighten up as you go. So you would then do that again to your next one. And bear in mind, you want to, however you want to do your design, you'll repeat that. So like this, see we went from blue to green, and then green to blue, and then blue to green, so the colors stayed together. And then this one that we're, we've got as an example, we did blue, red, blue, red. So, you'll do that, and then when you get done and you're at the end of your, uh, of your first row, you'll take your thread, your sinew right here, and you're going to thread it back through the next line. And then you'll pull it tight, and that will help tighten that first row up. And then 
and you'll do your your design in reverse. Back to the end, your very last one, we'll thread it through that final spray through, and you'll pull it tight again, see, and it'll tighten it up like that. And you come back through the next one. Sir. And like I said, you'll do this for each section that you want. So for, you know, a, a real small kid, you may only have two or two two sections, or maybe three. And then for if you're older, as a teenager or adult, you could have as many as this. So there's one, two, three, four, five. There's six sections there just for one that would fit someone like me. Tidy in. And don't worry if you're. Don't worry if it comes a little. If it's a little loose, because it'll all tighten up when you're done. And it's kind of a repetitive process. So if you want to listen to music or maybe a TV or show or something while you're doing this, that's that's perfectly okay. It's it's kind of like what I like to do. I'll put some music on or something if I'm doing projects like this or I'll you know maybe maybe uh, some language if I've got any on a CD or if I'm on YouTube I'll listen to some language so I can practice that way but it's kind of just it's a nice thing to do just to have some background noise while you're doing this because this is pretty Gonna concentrate on it a little bit at first. It's like anything else you do. If you practice some, um, you'll you'll get better and better every time, and you'll be faster. So let's say we're only gonna make this one three line, four lines. So we got four here, even though. So let's say we got, we're only going to do four like that. So what we need to do is we need to tie this off so our, our whole thing doesn't unravel. So usually what you'll want to do is you'll want to go into the one below the last one. You want to thread that through. You want to pull it, because we got to get this one tight this time because this is what's going to hold this all together. So you, Get it real nice and tight. And you're going to want to thread back through that top one because we're making our final knot. And you can always leave a little space there if you want to tie your knot on the inside. And you'll just thread through that, give yourself a little knot. You can do this two or three times. You just want to be able to make sure this isn't going to unravel when you're done. Let's see. And there's different ways to tie a knot. It's however you want to do. Let's see. 
you got that. It's pretty tight. It's got some wiggle room for when you're wearing it. And we're going to thread it through one more time. Now we've got a nice little knot. And then we'll we'll snip this off about here, and then we'll burn that so that'll stay. So you got that done. So now you'd have your choker the size you want, just like this. So then you gotta tie the ends. So what you do is you take pieces of hide, strip of hide, for however you want. Like I said, there's different lengths that you want to do. So if you want a little more room to tie in the back, you want a longer one. Or if you've got someone smaller and you want a shorter one, you don't have to do it so wide. But there's a couple different ways to tie these. You can uh, like start a stitch of sinew on one end, like I did on this one, and you just wrap it around your in those those spacers until you're you've got what you think is pretty good and tight, and then you'll stitch it into the the end and then burn that off. Uh, you can also There's a way you can cut a little strip through there and then run it through here in the middle and then just run it back through that leather. Or if you're just kind of in a hurry or you're new at this, you can just tie a, a knot. right here and then tie it again so it'll stay on there but you do that on both sides so that way you can tie it around your neck and that's pretty much all it is uh, if you later on if you get better you can learn how to like you'll put uh, something in the middle like this one has a piece of shell that you just wrap around that inside that middle middle spacer you could tie take a strip of leather and tie like a bead to it um, there's a lot of different things you can do. I uh, hope this helped you. And uh, I hope you uh, tune in to the next video we do. Thank you.